Hello, everybody. Welcome to the post week two neon PRs for the PBO. I'm Aiden, aka the St. Louis Logalios, and I got a loaded booth today. So hopefully, we won't go too long. We got Don Charleston Chestnuts up in Sunset. What's up? We got Za, retired New York Malamars, as always. Here to talk about some rain and some snow. And then we got the Syracuse Snorlax, who are also up in the Sunset Division. Howdy, howdy. All right. So let's uh, let's go ahead and get started with our last place team. I think yet again, I think they're last place in, in both PR so far. We have the Dallas Dynamax. So they took into consideration some of our things that we said um, before week one. They changed uh, into a more suitable rain team, kind of going along with it. Um, they sort of have a ground type, which feels bad. They do have a decent uh, electric resist in Chestnut, but it's not an immunity, which you would really like to have, um, considering a lot of their mons are still really weak to um, electric. Uh, but uh, their, their team doesn't look as bad now. It's more so that they are 0-2. They've lost to um, the Carolina Titans and the King Keldeos, the, last, the latter of which being a 6-0. Um, and so their play hasn't really impressed me uh, so far this season. Um, Za, what do you what do you think about this one? Uh, so the last game was a little bit unfortunate. Like if we're looking at the kills list for who they have on their squad, there's only one kill, low kicks. No one else actually has a kill, which is pretty entertaining to look at. Um, but the the strong points. This is a great name for a team. Dallas Dynamax is a top tier team name. Past that, uh, I don't think we have enough transactions, so I'm not going to suggest any change you can make because I don't even know if my man can. But yeah, if you can get a ground type just because of the composition of your team, you should. I know you have Terra on the uh, Araquanid, but it's not its not going to be enough. Um, past that, if we can't change it, uh, what I'm going to recommend to you is you, just, you need to play offense every week. You don't have switch-ins, so don't. Just hit things really hard in the rain. Um... But past that, I feel like my man is a little bit new to the drafting format. You're gonna, you're gonna uh, take some bumps this year, my man. But we're here for. We were all there once. Offense, that's the secret. All right, uh, Don. What do you, what do you think? I think this last week we uh, really got to see how this team just doesn't have defensive answers to a lot of things. Uh, for this, this is a rain team without a ground type and. It had the misfortune of being matched up against a Reggie Alecki. Uh, basically, from the start, in my opinion, that matchup's kind of cooked. Like, there's not much you can do to come back from that. Um, and then, as it turned out, the Reggie Alecki wasn't even what put this team in a pack. It was mostly Free Marina and Great Tusk. Um, which is just a little bit unfortunate, because Great Tusk is something that you'd think a rain team would be able to handle a bit better. But in this matchup, it... Uh, if I remember correctly, Rain didn't even come this game. It was uh, the first four Mons and then Chestnut Dreadnought, if I remember correctly. No, it, uh, sorry, Araquanid, or Floatzel didn't come. It was Grafati. But yeah, so there, there was no weather pressure here. So you you didn't have that speed advantage um, from Dreadnought and Floatzel to really punish that Tusk. And then after that, everything just kind of gets bodied. And I think we really saw that just happen this week. That was what happened. Yeah, and then uh, Syracuse, anything else to add on to this? I feel like you guys hit most of the main points here. I'm just going to tell this man he's got a lot of choice items in his future going forward. He wants to try and scouch out a few wins here or there. All right, with that, we move on to the number 14 team overall, the Richmond Raging Bolts. Uh, Syracuse, why don't you start us off with what this, uh, what this team is? So just looking at this team, obviously, like we said, um, he transferred over from rain to snow, and the fact that I think Alola Ninetales was even available is crazy to me, but, um, so I think he transitioned very, very well. I really like to see, um, you know, you can get some sneaky kills with Bear Tick as well, and with the Slush Rush. Um, obviously it's a little scuffed just because, like you said, he was, he transitioned from rain to snow, so Archelodon's great, but it's even better in rain, but seeing it on a snow team... It's not going to, you know, it's not the sets that you're obviously always going to uh, run. Um, I would have liked to see, obviously, his Terra Captains were set in stone. I really love, I used uh, Terra Whimsicott last season, 
I feel like you can do a lot of sneaky stuff with Terra Whimsicott and a lot of people sleep on it. But even not as Terra, um, him picking it up, I feel like it, it's such a versatile mon that a lot of people can um, not even realize what's what's going to hit you. It can obviously run Prankster, or you can even run Specs on it. I ran Specs a lot last season, and you can get a lot of cheeky kills using it. But overall, I think, um, you know, as long as he cleans up his play and stuff like that, I can see this team at least scrounging out a few wins here or there. Yeah, um, Don, what do you what do you think about uh, specifically like who they played, the kind of like the losses they've taken? Um, I just closed the. Uh... Wait a second, did this team ever have a Sableye? No, it has Sarledge. Well, a Sableye came to the game. Wait, what? <laughs> it sure <laughs> did. Huh. Catching things live. Um, huh. Well, that's interesting. Um, I suppose it doesn't matter too much because they lost anyways. Um, it could be a doc mistake. It, it could, could be, be a doc. It could be a doc mistake. Um, Tokens, we're blaming you. It's your fault. Yep. <laughs> Thank God I, I'm not doing that anymore. Um, but anyways. Uh, something I really do like about this team is that uh, it was a rain team, and the first four mons all love rain. And then he switched to snow, and you just kind of realize all of these guys work in snow, too. Um, like, Bundle and Bear Tick are a bit more obvious, but Thunder is taking click Weather Ball, and now it, ha now it has Bolt Beam coverage. Uh, Archaladon loves being behind the screens and just getting set up for, for like, everything. Um, but something I would change... Um, I think the the points work out where you can have Registeel and Satitan as your Terra captains. So like, just switch the Terra from Beartick to Satitan. Maybe drop Beartick for something else, and like, because like at that point, Beartick's just redundant. Satitan is just an infinitely better Terra captain. We've seen it be borderline oppressive in previous seasons. It it, it Satitan is that guy as a Terra captain, and I think not making it your Terra captain is a massive missed opportunity. Yeah, Za, anything else to add to this? Yeah, so both of these games that uh, Raging Bolts have played haven't been particularly competitive. Uh, we have him above just because the team, I think, is pretty much objectively better than Dynam than the D Dallas Dynamax. Although it is still not functionally very good. Like Bolts, regardless, uh, yeah, he's he's not playing really really bad, but he's bringing some slightly out there sets that don't seem to be connecting with each other so a lot of times like they're interesting in and of themselves but the the sets that we've been bringing don't seem to have much synergy together and because the team doesn't have synergy and the sets don't have synergy that's why we see a 5-0 and a 4-0 he has so much talent you know between our child on an iron bundle like it's hard for these things not to do enough damage to get some kills i don't i don't think it'll rarely get 6-0 this team because it has the screens it has a bunch of annoying things that it can do but, um, again, I don't know that he even has enough transactions left to do anything with the team. But I think you need to bring a, have a little bit more synergy in the sets rather than thinking, okay, this is the way my Archaladon set interacts with their team. Think about how does, my, how does this Archaladon set break the game open so that Bundle can clean at the end. I, I haven't seen that synergy in these games. So that's what I'd like to see from the Raging Bolts, that I think you have enough talent to where you can get a couple of wins this season, but we need to work on in-team synergy rather than individual sets. Yeah, I definitely I definitely think this team has probably some of the most talent that, we've, that we will slash might see in these like lower tier teams um or even some of the mid-tier teams i just think that their their play and prep have been a little bit lackluster and again like like zal was saying there's not too much synergy that's been brought to these games um i do think switching the terra from bear tick to Satitan would be a smart move considering uh, like don said that the redundancy is there i don't see why you wouldn't just switch it over to Satitan, who is just again infinitely better in every way um like if you still want to keep the bear tick then yeah it's there like you know you could just double slush rush um and that be what it is but i think you could get either a better fit for your team typing wise or role wise um as well as also just maybe even getting a better terra captain that either fits in your points or um i don't know just maybe another role player that kind of rounds out this uh this roster um to maybe boost it up in the with, with the sort of power um and so with that we move on to the number 12 team in the 
neon division it is the ottawa dawn fans um so one thing that this team that we mentioned uh after the draft was that this team was slow well this team is still slow they do have a weavile in a sauce book so they've gotten faster um and they do have mass grain now for webs um i mean which they've always had but mass grain with webs helps a little bit more considering their um team is slightly faster uh but this team is still very slow and has a good defensive profile but i think the the lack of speed and lack of like uh, initial offensive pressure on a lot of these mons is what has caused them to drop two in a row to uh, Kaborka and uh, Boston. Um, I think having the lack of those uh, definitely is, is setting this team back uh, a decent bit. Um, but uh, Syracuse, what do you what do you think about this? Um, obviously, just watching his replay using Gloking, I think definitely. Um... He's, it seems to preference the Yawn. I'd probably recommend him swapping over to maybe one of the other stats moves, either setting up some T-Spikes or using T-Wave instead. I feel like using Yawn is just, just generally doesn't get you the momentum, especially with how slow this team is, because it's just you're constantly going to be fighting and dealing, dealing with that chip damage with, how, like you said, how slow it is. You know, you're not, you're not going to be getting off these big hits over and over again. He can try run, you know, obviously Scarf Typhlosion, but at that point it becomes predictable it seems like he's just kind of stuck in this bulkiness but without able to really do much with this team but i feel like he definitely can you know squeak out a win here and there and stuff like that or set up with some uh you know quiver dance massacre in or do some things that you might not be expecting but overall i kind of do agree with you in that like you know i just see this team kind of struggling going forward which I'm not sure what more moves he can do. He still has, what, three more transactions? I, I would have to take a look at the board and see, but I feel like he's definitely going to probably need to swap out maybe one or two more things just to try and salvage what he can. All right. Uh, Don, how about you? Uh, I think one thing this team is really missing is a spiker. Uh, because this team, it's trying to, to do that fat uh, pivot kind of play style between Chili on Glow King, Flip Turn on Milo, uh, and then even like, uh, Clefable doesn't get teleported anymore, but Iron Hands gets Volt Switch, and Donpan's a great physical pivot anyways. It's so, like, it, it's trying to switch around and stick around for a while, but it just doesn't have anything to make progress. Like, your breakers aren't the, the strongest, most flashiest things alive. Like, Weavile is, oh, it, it, it's a great breaker, but it also has, like, its limitations, right? Like, it, it's hard to actually get on the field sometimes. And uh, when you're when one of your best breakers is hard to get on the field, it makes it hard to actually break teams open because you, you can only do it once or twice a game. Uh, Hydreigon is is a, is a very good mon, but it kind of feels like one of the team's best mons. And when one of your best mons is a Hydreigon, a format as powerful as Paldex, then it's kind of an issue in my opinion. Iron Hands, I'm a big Iron Hands guy. It's, in my opinion, probably uh, the best or at least one of the best uh, one-for-one one or two-for-one mons that exist. It can just trade so efficiently and get you down to that endgame a lot quicker than you uh, otherwise would. But uh, are just kind of exploitable in that, in that speed tier. And if you're slow, your opponents can invest in bulk and now all of a sudden your strong hitters aren't hitting as hard and since this this team doesn't hit particularly hard in the first place that that's even more noticeable and i think basically you, you guys said your, your number one comment was slow my number one comment is this team struggles to make progress there's no hazards uh the breakers aren't flashy yeah that's that's pretty much all i gotta say here all right za anything else you want to add to this yeah so don fans this is kind of like uh I'll, we'll point out some tiering maybe within the power rankings the bottom two teams that we saw aren't really functional in any way uh just the way they're built in a draft setting this is closer to functional it has two terra steels but it doesn't actually have a steel type which i feel like if you have one terra type on hydreigon it's better as poison but i know why it's steel obviously because there isn't one um the first week against kaborka they just kind of got tr got caught in a trap and they had nothing to get around the executor uh, that's tough, but I wouldn't necessarily say they really got badly outplayed. They just got outprepped, right? The game against Babets, they kind of got they got toasted a little bit. Um, 
This team, I think, can come back. We've seen Donovan made the playoffs last year. So I, I think this this has a much better chance to get some more wins. Like looking at the schedule, they play Bulbasaurs. That's a winnable game. Bolts can probably win. Uh, and so Titans can probably win. So you got three decent games. And if you can pull one out against Litleos or Solgaleos, uh, what then I think uh, this you could still maybe make the playoffs, even though we're 0 2 here. Um, we got to use the pivoting more. So we got to get Weavile in. We got to get Hydreigon in. We have enough stuff here. We, we might be forced into Volt Switch on Iron Hands. But between King, Hands, and uh, Milotic, we should, in theory, be able to do enough to get some good positioning here. And we don't have Spice, which is unfortunate, but we got three. Pretty decent stealth rock mods. Like every week, you're bringing at least Don Van Clefable or Hydreigon, and we can get some stuff up for Weavile. And no, Weavile is not what it once was, but it's still a pain in the ass to deal with if you can position it right. And we have enough switching on the guys we have to get this thing in. So I got hope for Don fans. He's down here. I think he can get up into like the top six before the season's over. But he's got to pick up his play a little bit. All right. And then coming in at number 11, we got the Detroit Zoroarks. Um, so, uh, Zaw, why don't you go ahead and just continue on here? Okay. So, you know, based on play and effort, my man Detroit should probably be lower than Don fans. But his team is significantly better. And he was much higher in the original rankings. So he's still kind of holding on to that a little bit like the game against uh Babette's it looked like he was gonna win but he got caught in like the only way he could possibly lose and I think on com we said for like well, I wasn't on that com but you guys were saying for a while like hey if this is this set he can win and you guys were joking about it but I was sitting going look no it's probably gonna be that set he should really be accounting for the fact that this is booster attack set up moon um so that was a little bit tough but he, he, he probably should have won that game. The last game against Solgaleos was not... Like, you can't lose to Al Creamy. Not in this division. Well, I guess this this is the end of it. But still, you can't you can't lose to Al Creamy. You know what it does. you got to bring something. To, you say when you see this, I'm not losing to this because I don't want to be the guy who lost to Al Creamy. So for that, we're down here. But the same things we said about the team preseason, like, it it on paper is really quite good. It's, it's a little bit too top-heavy. It has holes because it has... Three dudes, like two 190 or 180 dudes or whatever we have them at. But there's enough pieces here to where if this doesn't make the playoffs, like if this goes two and six, it's bad. Like this should not go two and six. So we look at the schedule. He's got Dynamax and Bolts. So he should get two wins. But then he's got to he's got to beat Sylveon's, Litleos, Unknowns, or Keldeos, which are all like competent teams with competent trainers that are running the team. So it's going to be tough for Zorok. We got to see some more. We gotta see some more from you, big man. All right, um, Don. Anything else? Um, yeah, I think I just want to say I I really am big on this team. This team I've used it in mocks. Uh, it's very fun. It hits hard, and uh, a lot of your things that look kind of like overlap, like Garchomp and Dio Speed as spikers, it allows for flexibility in the other. Like, if you bring Spike Scratch on one game, you can bring Plot Dio Speed uh, alongside it, or vice versa. If you bring Spike's Dio Speed, you can set up Garchomp. I think Volcanion is a demon of a Terra Captain. Spectrier is a borderline ban worthy mon in a lot of people's minds. Scizor is a classic uh, draft staple. And, like, this team, it if Detroit can lock in a little bit and put some thought into his prep, then he could like legitimately go the rest of the season undefeated. Like this is a team that uh, if he plays well, it's it's a championship contender. But as of now, his play just hasn't been in there. His mind just hasn't been in it. I think um, because against like a Hatterene, he could have brought like Roar on Bastiodon, which unironically like seems decent in the matchup. Um, his doing uh is is like. A Terra Captain that is a little underexplored, but also a little overhyped at the same time, if that makes any sense. It's either it's either you hate them on and think it's terrible, or you love it and think it's like the greatest low-tier Terra Captain ever, but I think realistically it's it's uh, just a little bit above average. But I think he can absolutely lean on that in a lot of matchups, and I feel like if he really just uh, 
she really just locks into a lot of these matchups and really focuses on what sets are the best then uh, he really can win a lot of these games. Yeah, Syracuse, anything else to add? I feel like you guys hit most of the points. This is probably one of the first, the, uh, like the team so far. This is the team where on paper, if you gave this to anyone, they could rock it, easily make playoffs, even make finals. I like this team. It's really well built. Um, just like you, like you guys said, his play is so far has just been unfortunate. Um, especially, you know, getting caught by uh, Al Creamy, obviously is very unfortunate but um i think it's just mostly just team building if he works on his team building and just preps a little bit better knowing what sets he might be coming i could see this team easily taking out another few wins i mean he's got dallas next week um he's got litleo's raging bolts he can easily turn this season around real quick and i i could see this team as long as he cleans it up a bit making playoffs easily yeah i mean in, in anybody who knows pb any amount of pbo lore um we all know why Bumble's prep and play might be at times questionable um, or uh, maybe just downright um, goofy. Yeah, just goofy, silly. Um, <laughs> yeah, it, it, you know, but I think that this team definitely has all the pieces. Like everyone said, it has redundancy. It has good physical special it has even decent defense which is something that when you look at top heavy rosters sometimes they may not have uh sometimes it may just look like just super hyper offense which is kind of what this team is but again it has the defensive pieces to be something um and i think that yeah with with just a little bit of locking in maybe at times this team can can really go far uh with the rest of the season but with that we move on to the number 10 spot the boston bulbasaurs um so uh syracuse take us away with this one so this is the former gold angle champions uh moved down from sunset um just looking at this team your your immediately good question is you know what's the bulbasaur pick obviously he's having a little fun with it i feel like you know this this he can have a, if he takes it seriously I can easily say him going playoffs, playoffs with this team. It's real, it's nasty, but it's also limited at the same time. He's mostly going to be running offense, as you know, just on paper. He's not going to be swapping in much. There's no real regenerators. There's no, you know. I think does he even have a wish passer? No. So it's he's going to be ru running mostly a one note play style of just hyper offense, hyper offense, and it's up to the people playing against the Boston Bulbasaurs to prep and try and counter that if he goes in every game and they and he can catch him off guard i could see him easily taking you know wins here wins there and um he does have probably one of the harder schedules for the uh for the neon division not having to play you know dallas not having to play um you know any of the uh teams we've already talked about beforehand he's gonna have a really rough schedule you know, the easy, uh, so far on our power rank is the only one that he's ranked higher is the Ottawa Don fans. So I it's it's going to be a tough one for the Boston Bulbasaurs, I think. All right, Don, how about you? Um, this team is really interesting because there like, as we've alluded to already, there is almost no defense on this team. Uh <clears throat> Your, de your defensive options are Golden Go, which, it, granted, is a phenomenal defensive, defensive option, but it likes to keep those options open a lot of the time, so by having it be your only real defensive option, uh, it's pigeonholed in a lot of matchups. Manaphy is, like, okay at being bulky. It can run an AV once in a while, be a pivot with U-turn, uh, but it also wants to be doing that offensive tail blow or take hard setup stuff. And so, again, it's, like, it's making it do things it doesn't want to be doing all the time. Crooked Isle is like a decent bulky piece when it's with Intimidate, but again, it doesn't want to be doing it all the time. Like, basically, all your defensive pieces are like, sure, they can do it, but they don't want to be doing it every single game. And so, basically, the game plan with this game or with this team just throw Scarf and Specs and Band on stuff and see if they will let you get away with it. Um, and the thing about that is, if, if the coach is good, they shouldn't let you get away with it. Uh, it shouldn't be that hard to just kind of dance around your choice items. Or your setup options, because you, you also do have good setup options. You have uh, Golden Go, Hiram, Ogre Pond, Manaphy, Porygon. Porygon is, uh, I've learned, a much better Terra Captain than I gave it credit for. Um, but 
I'm not sure it's enough to pull this team out of the realm of predictability. And I think because of that, there's just a lot of um, a lot of weaknesses here. Like also, no hazard removal as far as I can see. You have one spiker in Ogre Pond. You have one, two rockers in Lycan Rock and Crocodile, uh, and two NFEs on the team. One of which is a Terra Cavern, which honestly should never come to a game. Bulbasaur shouldn't come to a game, although I think it has already. So basically, you're kind of just playing eight Mon here. Um, but, like, yeah. really struggles in that regard. All right. Zah, anything else? Okay, so this team is really objectively not better than the two that have come before it in terms of structure. But winning matters. Like, you have to actually win games. And we saw when you're carrying a Goldango, a Manaphy, a Kiram, and a, an Amorous, sometimes you just win. Because the team's not ready for your setup or whatever set you have. So that's the benefit of having talent. The downside, as we'll see probably as we go forward, is this team has no pivoting at all. Essentially, like, no re like on two guys on the whole team. There's no way to really get the Kiram or the Golden go in except a hard switch. Same thing with the Enamorous. So in likelihood, as we continue on, this team will drop. But again, we we need to see victories plus structure. The structure isn't enough to overcome actual results. So go uh, Bulbasaur's Gots of Titans uh, that week with the with the physical Enamorous set. Uh, I expect Kiram to get at least one win at some point, and Golden Go maybe get a win. So. See this maybe getting to two or three wins, but we'll have to see. But if it, in in power rankings, wins matter, ladies and gentlemen. Yeah, I mean they they got one over Carolina with physical enamors, but I think this team, uh, two of its biggest problems, uh, three of its biggest problems, no pivoting, not really any removal, and it's very predictable. A lot of the time, you're gonna be able to know what this team wants to run into you or even needs to run into you, and I think that the coach hasn't helped that i think they've ran physical enamorous twice uh in both the weeks that they've brought it um and so like while it has worked and it got you a win i don't think it's sustainable um but yeah, with those three things like yes the team isn't as necessarily like sound structurally sound as some of the others that we've seen so far but it it has a win, uh, and that's something that like like Zaw said, wins matter. When you show that you can win with a roster, that shows more than what a well constructed roster shows with no wins. Um, so that's something that you know this team has over the others. Uh, but anyway, we now move on to the number nine team, the team that actually lost to the Bulbasaurs. Is that is the wrong team? Carolina the Titans. Um, so, uh, so Don, why don't you start us off with this one? Um, so this team, uh, it's like the first team we've seen today that has like uh, an actual like reputable core, if that makes sense. Uh, we have Rillaboom's Neatran, right? It, this team is really leaning into that hyper offense grassy terrain, which honestly I'm a big fan of. I, I've used it before. I didn't do very well with it, but I really enjoyed it. Um, and so basically the team is, it, it's very nice. <clears throat> the Terra captains are a little bit underwhelming in my opinion. Uh, I, I feel like Electivire is just not really that great. Uh, and you see for your, for being your more expensive Terra captain, you usually want something a little bit more offensive to be filling that role. So, um, <clears throat> I don't know. Like, a lot of the top tier picks work together, and then after that, it kind of starts falling apart, in my opinion. Um, I haven't actually seen the, the replay for this game, but um, you said it was Physical and Amorous doing things? Yes, Physical and Amorous did a lot of things. Yeah, I feel like against a team like this, that shouldn't really be happening. You have, uh, like, uh, uh, Dadon Sparse is, like, decent at fixing that. Heatran should have been, like, a decent switch in to proc a Flame Body or something like that. Um, and Galarian Weezing is like the, the very obvious one, uh, that should have been there to try and stop that. It should, should have also been your 
probably one of your go-to enamor's answers in the Weezing first place because there... it like resists everything. Weezing was there or um, tried to be an answer and then it wasn't. And then it wasn't? Okay, then I guess I don't know. Um I don't know. I haven't I haven't seen the play from this one, so I can't really say that much about it. Um <clears throat> so I don't know. All right, Za, how about you? Okay, so let's explain why is this above the team that beat them. Uh, this is just objectively a significantly better team. And I think that for people who have seen the replay, you might know he got caught by something that he wasn't expecting. And it wasn't, it was a weird set into the team. So, like, I'm not saying I would have lost to that. I, I think I would have recovered. But I get why he was, it's the type of thing that sometimes if it happened in a game, you'd be like, I lost this, but it was still bad. Like I, it, even though it beat me, it was, and not even in like a salty way. Just in like, you know, sometimes you just take the L to things like that. So I feel like this by far is the best team. Well, not the Spectre team is also very good, but I just like a lot of these guys. This seems like a much solid team that it's it's pretty easy to win with this team. Like Hisui and Samurai is just objectively good. Rillaboom's such so good individually. Dragonite so good individually, and I feel like. Um, my man just kind of got caught by something rather than he got outplayed because he still almost came back in the game. Like, he almost just missed reverse sweeping from what I remember. Um, and his his first week was a pretty, like, standard good win. And based on team composition, you could change this with the team before it, but I personally still think this because they both have one win that I and I think this team has shown... Uh, has a bit more upside, so I feel more comfortable having them in this position. So that's the explanation for it. All right. And then, uh, Syracuse, you have anything else you want to add? Um, like I said, just to keep hammering home, when you lose a 13-turn game, it's not really indicative of, like, your play style. Like, like we just keep hammering home. He got caught. Um, I see this team going, recovering from this, and as long as he keeps his head up, I can only see good things going forward. I don't see anything necessarily wrong with this team. It, it checks all the boxes. Like we said, like uh, Don said earlier, the um, Terra Captain's a little bit weird. But besides that, um, you know, it's got Heatran, which is, you know, I think one of the best mons in draft because it can do so many different things. Um, Hammerot's always good with the Hazard, Sneasler. This team is a well built team. It just. It, it won't be down in these in these rankings for very long is my prediction all right and then yeah i mean this team it's your classic you know terrain team sneezler heatran as per usual the common draft trope um yeah i think i think they have a chance to bounce back um i do think their schedule is one of the toughest out of everybody's they had probably their two easiest opponents first and from here on out it does not get any easier having the middle stretch of sydney bc and chicago i think is is going to be very tough i think they with this roster they should be able to maybe cheese out one of those uh one you know one or two maybe even three more wins throughout the rest of the season because sneeze the really boom is a good combo and then again they have some really really good individual pieces um but i just after seeing how they've done so far this season i don't see them climbing much higher than than here if i'm being quite honest but with that we move on to i believe the number eight slot with the kaborka gangars um so uh so Zah, start start us off with this one okay first thing we want to point out this is the week two power rankings so they've already played their week three game which is why their differential is so bad but that's not being taken into account for these rankings because it'd just be too complicated if one extra game is for, like, a team, right? Yeah. So we're just going to base this on the first two weeks. Um, good win against Don fans in week one, which even though the Don fans has ended up lower in the power rankings, it's not a bad team. So it wasn't, like, an easy win. They beat him with the classic Kaborka Alolan Executor set. The game against Chimchars was a little bit more. It was a it was a much longer game, um, and I just think Chimchars team is 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 better, honestly. 
and they did outplay him over the course of a long game, but it wasn't some, even though it's a 4-0, it was a, it was not a dominant 4-0. It was just consistently chipping things down, playing over time. Um, Kaborka's team is a collection of a lot of really good individual guys that I don't know actually like work together on a week to week basis. I still, I said this in the preseason power rankings. Um, I'm going to say it again. I don't know why you need Excadrill and Corbinite on the same team. Um, it just seems that you could do some, I, I'm not, I haven't looked at it. I'm just going to point this out again. Cause I still think it's weird. I think you could do some else with these points, uh, what it is. I have no idea. Um, but this, this, I don't know that this will ever change from where it is. I know you obviously people watching the video, you can see they lost 6 0 this week. So they'll go down probably in the next time we do this rankings. But because of Kaborka's play style, and this team is very explosive between Bolt, Ogre Pond, and Kukwavel. And even Screamtail can do silly things. So they'll probably end up going three and five, maybe sneaking in at the end of the playoffs and still stay around this eighth spot in the power rankings. Uh, but Kaborka's always kind of weird to place in that way uh absolutely fire logo though all right uh syracuse anything else um like you said fire logo but in all seriousness he's it's 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 an interesting team build um if let's see what he can do with it i'm not gonna count him out his next next week hopefully obviously we trying to ignore uh week three but hopefully going into week four and stuff as well as you know uh later on in the season he sh hopefully can bounce back and um you know like you said sneak into the playoffs maybe that th you know three and five four and four kind of record um but we'll see what he can do i will hold i will hold my breath until then because i don't want to discount anything that might he might go have going forward all right and then uh don anything else uh yeah i think that this week or week two uh, the reason that it kind of fell apart for Kaborka was kind of a play issue here. Uh, he kind of got put in a pack by Terra Iron Leaves, which, by the way, I was calling it since since before the season started. That thing was going to be a Demon Terra Captain. Like, every division is proving it right now. Um, but anyways, he had, like, a pretty a pretty safe kill against it with um, Raging Bolt. He just had to click Thunderclap in front of it, and it would have died. And instead, he switched out and, like, let something die. I think it was his Arboliva. And it just seemed like a really, really bad play because he also had a Sash X back that like always would have beaten it if it decided to try and like outplay the Thunderclaps. So like I think because of that, he ended up losing like way more Mons than he needed to to the uh, to the Iron Leaves, especially because he could have just gone to the Excadrill earlier and just popped the Sash and killed it. So he would have just like basically kind of lost his Excadrill as opposed to like just losing half his team. So I feel like uh, the play was just kind of off this week, and it kind of it, it caused him to get put in a pack, and now obviously now he's falling. Off. I believe he, I believe that he can pull it back. He does have uh, some games that are definitely winnable for him. Like uh, he plays uh, week four, he plays Dallas. Week six, he plays Boston Bulbasaur. Week seven, he plays Richmond Raging Bolt. All of which are like playable matchups, especially the Rain team because he has a whole Raging Bolt um, and an Alolan Executor. So like. These teams are definitely win winnable matchups for him. I think he'll be able to pull it back, maybe make playoffs. But uh, if his play stays the same, I'm not so sure. Yeah, and uh, this, I mean, he's able to do some crazy things with some crazy mons like Alolan Exeggutor. We've seen it. Um, I do think, and like we mentioned in the post-draft power rankings, I feel like some swapping around of Terra Captains could be in order. I, like, I understand that Screamtail can be decent as a terror captain but i feel like it, in order to do that it would need better defensive types which like normal and fire aren't bad but usually you think like like steel or, or water or something along those lines obviously normal is good for its ghost weakness um but i think maybe transferring him to like arboliva and then again either dropping corvinite or excadrill and picking up another solid um high point mon that doesn't kind of overlap with um what you're already trying to do could be really good um but other than that, I think this team is solid. I think they can bounce back. I think they probably make playoffs as one of like the the very bottom tiers. Um, I think they have the potential to to finish out the season strong. I just they need to they need to kind of pick up a little bit of slack here um, from from how they've been uh, playing. 
So with that, we move to the number seven spot. The Uncertain Unknowns. Um, so uh, Syracuse, go ahead, and, uh, go ahead and start this one. So obviously having three of the same mods that are on my team, I'm naturally biased. But in all seriousness, I, I really do like this team. Um, you know, it's got... I think Incineroar is a great Terra captain. Obviously, Kilowattro, we've seen what this thing can do Terra-wise and just the offensive damage it could put out. Um, it's got a great defensive core, Ting Lu, uh, Fortress, can't go wrong. It's going to always have Stealth Rocks. It's always going to have spikes every week. So whoever goes into this team is going to have uh, have some kind of hazard removal. you got the T-Spikes and the Dragology Spikes on Meow Scratus. Stealth Rocks and Swampert. This is the hazard team that you have to be aware, afraid of. If in whatever team is not, if you have no hazard removal, I see, I can't see you winning against the, this team right here. But, um, you know, the one thing that kind of just stands out necessarily is, you know, you got Meow Scarada. Horror Arc is a great, is great, but it it does it just on surface it looks like it is lacking that nice oomph that you would want from a team. But, you know, he does have Lucha. It's a good team. Um, I see this making playoffs. I don't know if it's making finals, but I see this going far. And just whatever, if if he can catch whoever opponents he has going forward without having hazard removal, it's going to be an easy win going forward for him. All right. Za, how about you? Uh, So, Uncertain Unknowns has played well. Like, week two, they played the top team to a only a two-point loss, which is pretty good, giving, I think, we believe we had this pretty low in the preseason power rankings and they beat Bulbasaurs. Um, so I like their play. They must be comfortable. This is a weird-looking team, like, when you just look at it. This was one of the ones I believe I said, I don't know how this adds up to the points, because we have a lot of points, and a lot of these teams we saw, the one with Spectre, like, it just looks so much more threatening than this does. But Unknowns is making it work. It looks like, um... He should end up four and four, five and three would be my guess based on the a couple of games like against Keldeos or against Gengars goes one way or the other. So it looks like a playoff team. The only thing I say, the thing I got to point out again, I probably said this preseason. I have no idea why Halucha is here. It's just it's so random to me. I feel like this should just be something. It, it should be combined with a guy into something else. And uh, for Ben, I'll say Fortress sucks. Don, anything else to add? That's it. He All sucks. Right. Um, <clears throat> so what I noticed about this team is, like you said, Zah, it's kind of hard to see where all the points are going. And I think it's because basically everything here outside of the first two picks are very mid-tier mods. Um, like, basically everything is in, like, the 130 to, like, 80 range, which is, like, fine. It's not necessarily bad. It just makes your team look a little bit less intimidating off-rip. But another thing I really want to point out here, and uh, Sydney absolutely exploited this last week, or at least tried to. I don't remember if he actually got a bunch of kills with it. But there are no good fairy resists on this team. Your fire type does not resist fairy. Your dragon type, or your, your poison type, does not resist fairy. Your steel type is a foratress. You just don't have those sturdy fairy resists on this team. Um, and Dragology is a fat fuck. All right, don't get me wrong. All right, but it's not eating hit after hit, especially when hazards are up. It gets worn down pretty quickly. Same with Incineroar. Um, Incineroar is Terra Poison, but honestly, it doesn't work. Most week, it would rather be Fairy or... The other one's Ghost, but honestly, I would make it Dark. Um, <clears throat> and so, like, basically, this team, it, it's good, but it lacks a lot of sturdy resists to important typings. Uh, like, also, there's no conventional bulky ground resist like yeah sure yeah technically meow scarada resists ground all right sure technically kilowattro is immune to ground sure technically haldooch is immune to ground but none of these guys are fat enough to want to take any coverage that any any of those guys might be carrying and so this team has some unconventional offense it's kind of lacking some defense outside of like ting lu being the unkillable monster that it is and from there, it just, uh, like, it works. I, I've used this team in mocks, and I gotta say, it felt a lot better in in use, uh, like, in, in practice. It, it felt a lot better in practice than it did in theory. 
And I think uh, because like a lot of these guys on the team are just good on their own merits, they'll be able to go pretty far. So yeah, I think I think Rex will definitely be able to uh, win more games this season, one hundred percent. There's no doubt in my mind. I think that one of the things that this team kind of suffers from a lot is that a lot of the Mons like to be stylish and wear some vests, specifically <laughs> ones meant for assaulting. Um, at least whenever I look at it, like Dracology usually is assault vest swampert is usually assault vest and Cineroar is has a lot more diversity in what it can do but as well likes to be assault vest just because all those mons they like to be you know offensive and kind of hit but they're all slow so they can't really run like choice items a lot um and so a lot of the time because they're bulkier and have the offense they do like to you know slap on a vest and just say all right come at me um, but I do think that Rex has the has the mons has the play in order to come back um, scratch out. I'd say probably a five and three record, something along those lines. I think this team is good enough to do that, um, and I think the coaches as well. But as as we've all mentioned and pointed out, there is a fortress. It is not a real steel type. Unfortunately, Paldex doesn't have a good bunch of steels to pick from. Um, and so with that, we move on to number six. The BC Litlias. So we had this team really high in uh, the preseason power rankings. I believe we had it second. Either second or third. It was one of the two. Um, and uh, they have... It was third. Third. It was third. All right. So they've dropped off two spots or three spots. So not not super bad. Um, they did lose to the number one team week one. Only a 1-0. Um, so that's not terrible. They did beat Richmond by plus four, um, but I think their play has kind of lacked what we would like to see out of the number three team and or the rest of the teams above this have just exceeded expectations and shown that they are potentially better than what this team has shown so far. I think their team composition is solid. I think they have some really, really good superstars. Obviously, Regen Core is, is good. Allo, Torrenty, um, Hoop Unbound has shown to be really, really good as a terror captain many teams with this mon have used it and seen uh good success with it um and overall i think it has the pieces but i think a lot of the time it is a top six top seven sort of team the last three mons sure they all have very very niche uses where they can come but i don't see them being like real threats to come to games and be like super valid so you kind of know what mons are coming and what mons aren't coming which makes this team predictable and i think easier to plan for um but overall i think this team is still good i think they can easily bounce back we'll see how they do against the tougher opponents like chicago and you know detroit and you know the keldeos and the Baybats. but um i think this team has what it is i think they can make playoffs pretty easily as like a top four seed um i just don't know if that predictability is going to be able to be overcome when facing again the, the tougher opponents that they have uh so um don how about what, what do you think about this one okay i'm gonna say it i think having this team this low is criminal l l l let's put this in perspective right now all right so far they lost to the number one team by one point because he made a really clutch trick room play right at the end of the game. Very easily could have won that game if Sydney didn't absolutely clutch up. All right. Then after that, proceeded to dominate his next opponent with a 4 0, like a very commanding victory against a guy who brought stuff that wasn't even on his roster. Uh, against a guy who brought a slush rush to Titan and Iron Bundle. <laughs> like, did, did you see what I mean right now? Like, like, and not, not to mention, Against against the Iron Bundle, he made smart rings. He brought AD Hariyama to like uh, cover cover for all the options there. He brought Bullet Punch because like it hits. There's a Titan hits the Nine Tails. It hits the Bundle. I think the the brings and the plays have been really solid from this team. And if if okay. I were the one who made this list, I would have put this at like third probably. Okay, for the first time ever, we're not going to change the list, but we're going to make an addendum because this man beat something that wasn't even allowed in the game. He just he beat the the invincible illegal save a lie. Yep. <laughs> let, let, let's put the let's put the asterisks on this slide real quick. The asterisks on the on what are we is this five? 
six. Six. I believe. Six. Yeah. You, you guys put this like middle of the road. Like that. I th- I think that's crazy. I think I losing know. to the number one team in the division right now by one point and then dominating your next opponent who in their own right does have a strong like team offensively making the right calls to bring the right checks to those mons. And then, like being able to improvise against something that wasn't even in, in the plan, I think I think that shows a lot of talent. It shows a lot of foresight, and it shows a lot of capability from this team. And I still have a lot of high hopes for it. I don't. So for, first things, I don't know if we necessarily ranked it low because this team is bad. Who knows? Maybe that maybe the teams above this have just been like playing out of their minds. This team is good. I would say this team with probably the next three teams could be interchanged at, at any point, right? Like, I think I think this team and the next three are all kind of in that same range um, of, like, you know, being... I, I will say, beating a Pokemon that wasn't even on the other team's roster, pretty funny. Definitely, you know, <laughs> adds, adds a few extra style it would be on it, would be better if, it would be better if that was, like, Mega Rayquaza and not Save a Life. <laughs> <Yeah>. It was... <laughs> Okay, so like, let's let some some disagreement is interesting. So this, I'm not going to put this above the undefeated teams, especially because all the undefeated teams were already in the top five. Oh, all the top five were undefeated. Yeah, that's no. I I, I didn't know that. What I'll say is the team above this, Ken Keldios, is interchangeable with this one. So the difference is the victory over Raging Bolts. We said it like both of the bottom two teams, Dynamax and Raging Bolts, are just very poorly constructed teams. So a win over that at four zero is like oh, is it's the it's just not that impressive to the list makers of this prestigious Neon Power Rankings list. So and yet yeah, so the one zero loss against Sydney is. It, it is a good loss, but it is still a loss. So at best, this could be five, but I can't. We can't put it above Babette's, Solgaleo's, Sydney, or Chimchar's because they were all top five, and none of them have lost. Okay. So that's the explanation for the ranking. Right. Just no BC Litlios. I have faith in you. I think. I think it is I, what, to say we all have faith. And, and like, yeah, when I'm looking at the when I'm. When I'm looking at the schedule, I expect this team to be five and three. That's what I would assume it finishes at. All right, uh, Six and two, five and three. Syracuse, anything else? Um, I think we mostly hit the same points. For the same reason that Detroit Zorox is so low, um, this is the same reason why this isn't in like top four, top three. You know, wins matter more than anything. Um, so once this team, if this team can go on a tear and, you know, ig- ignore that first uh, loss, which was to you know a close match to the best team. Um, he's going to keep moving up in the power rankings. But between this one and King Keldios, I it, it's interchangeable. They both have a, a solid core. Uh, I love the Gouging Fire, Iron Treads, Torn T core. Um, you know, any 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 even though it might be slightly predictable, like we said, he's going to be bringing you know at least the same four to five mons every single week with the last three just kind of being interchangeable for niche instances. But even even if it is predictable, it is a scary thing to, even if you can plan around it, it's going to be scary walking into most of these mons. So All right. I think, uh, you know, if, if he was at minimum five and three, I can see him going six and two. All right, with that, we'll move on to officially the top five. We're at number five. We have the King Keldios. Uh, Zaw, start us off with this one. Why do you think this one is above BC? Uh, I just think the... So, for instance, we have roughly the win against Dallas Dynamax. Just absolute destruction. Just, like, domination. Didn't even come close to dropping. And I do think that's worse than the Raging Bolts team. But it's not, like, that much worse. They're, th- those two are also kind of interchangeable. 1-0 loss to Solgaleos, who I feel like has a really, really good team. And it was about as close a game as you could have. And then just on paper, this team is really good. Like, it just has a lot of really solid... like. Like, traditionally really good guys, um, except for Zoroark. That's a weird pick, but I know they like Zoroark. Um, uh, Petcheron, super annoying to deal with. Alecky, a favorite of mine. It's it's really this, be- and the last one, um, 
You, it, I think it depends on personal preference. I, the other one has more good guys, BC Lit Leos, but I'm not sure they all actually work together super well. I think it it looks really good on if you don't think about it too much. And I think over the course of a number of games, that team might be a little bit more awkward than this one. And I think this one has been piloted a little bit better in both games combined. And they're pretty much interchangeable in terms of the ceiling for me. Like, I don't think either one of these teams is going to win the championship because I think the four above it, there's just too many other teams that are better than them. But I think this is just slightly better and has been played slightly better so far. All right, Don, anything to, to, to say here? Uh, yeah. Um, so B is, uh, <clears throat> B B's been, uh, on the come up lately. She's been, uh, he he's been beating a lot of people. Um, I think the team is a little bit ground weak if Appleton doesn't come, uh, but Great Tusk is physically bulky enough to, um, to eat most of those hits anyways. Uh, I think the speed tiers look pretty good here. You go from, what, Tusk to, like, Lichen Rock to Cinderace, Tornadus, I guess, exists. And then Reggie, like the fake speed tier. It's like you don't have anything that's like an actual super fast speed tier, like in, in the 130 range. Um, because you, you, nothing's creeping Reggie like he ever. Uh, honestly, I feel like the Terra Captains are kind of missed opportunities on the team. I'm a big Lichen Rock midday hater. Uh, I think Zoroark is not great. Appleton is good, but I think maybe if you just go on like Appleton Tornadus and then. Maybe you probably have some have some leftover points there. You can get some other last guy. I don't know. Yeah, you, you're way. right. Don. We we talked about this preseason. They could just get thunderous oh, eye. You? Yeah, they can get thunderous okay. eye instead of tornadoes. Like, there's a million things they could do. Okay. Um. Either way. Uh, the first like six months though are like a crazy good uh, like really crazy good six. Right, like two two of these guys are on the number one team in Sunset right now, Akuma, Cinderace, and Metagross. Uh, and like, th there's a lot of similarities between this team and that team, but, uh, between like having a really strong top tier ground type, um, having a really strong defensive poison type, and then the, the Cinderace and Metagross stuff like that. Um, there's a lot of similarities going on there. Those they share a lot of those same strengths. I think I, th I think in that regard, this is very potentially like a, a higher end playoff team like semis something like that all right syracuse um besides having a fire logo for his team um i see almost you know no weakness in this team it's got just overall just um quality quality mons and uh metagross i feel like it does get sleeped on in a lot of drafts i wanted to draft it this season but i ended up passing on it but overall, um, you know, I see no weaknesses in the team. The only thing, you know, like we, you guys touched on earlier was Tornadus could potentially be uh, Thunderous instead. Um, but the big thing I want to point out going forward for King Kelios is his schedule. Look at this schedule. He does not face anyone ranked higher than him currently. And I think that's huge going forward for him. Um. He doesn't have to face Sylveons. He got his hardest matchup already out of the way week one. And I I think he that's the biggest thing looking at that schedule. And just his hardest matchup is probably going to be the Lit Leos. That will be the deciding factor to being like a top four, top three team. But other than that, I feel like he'll touch most on it. Yeah, I mean, this team, I think... I think we talked about it pre, you know, week one that this team could probably use some switching around of Terra Captains, maybe some, you know, picking up and dropping of Mons or, you know, even just swapping out Tornadus for Thunderous and Carnet, like, you know, a few things like that. But otherwise, yeah, this team, uh, I will say, has been a nightmare in prep and um, still continues to look like one. Uh, I think this team, uh, especially with the, with the pilots there, has the chance to has the chance to win out the season and go seven and one more realistically looking at like probably six and two or maybe even five and three in case um you know something crazy happens with bumble as we've talked about his play can be a little silly um but i think that this team definitely has what it takes to to go the distance and um you know be one of the top five teams uh in the league 
but with that we move on to the number four team the boston baybets okay missed, missed the not the boston belvasaurus no, 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 not no, no, the no. boston right, belvasaurus there's, there's two bostons all right we had me confused for a second bba and bbu very close to abbreviations on the dock anyway boston baybets at number four um cq start us off with this one uh, I mean, obviously, trying to ignore the uh, 6-0 to the Caborca is uh, making this difficult. But besides that, this team has multiple rapid spinners. You are not getting hazards against this team. Um, I Honestly, I would almost say not even bring it just with how many rapid spinners they have. But um, you're, you're looking at just the nasty nastiness that is Annihilate from Roaring Moon, uh, the defensive core. He is just nasty here. I love uh, Belly Bolt as a terror captain. I feel like he gets slept on a lot. Um, Carcoal, you know, it's even for an NFE, it's still a really great uh, mon. You know, if for a cheap terror captain, you know, its value is there. Overall, I think um, this team, even though it's like, you know, some of the other teams may look scarier on paper, I think this team just has everything you want in a team and piloting well, which they've had done so far amazingly. I This is want a scary scary team going forward and going into the playoffs i would hope to not be seated against it all right za i know i know you've had a, a hand in this team go ahead and uh talk about talk about your yeah, well, craftsmanship <laughs> no nah, i mean no we'll say publicly i help uh rochi and make this i know he they do not send me any of the pastes i have no idea what happens in the games at all so i i don't help them play and in any way um which you'll know if you watch the games um but yeah just just based on the first two weeks like did the, boston babettes has is almost single-handedly responsible for putting zorarks and don fans where they are in the power rankings because their teams are objectively better structurally than a number of the teams above them but babettes just like beat them down there with their bare hands um the first week in a way, it's a little sacky and lucky, but again, that's just what Moon does. Like, if you've watched that game, which everybody should, because it's a funny video. Um, people acting like, oh, there's no way Moon can sweep at the end of the game. Yeah, of course it can. That's literally what it does. Like, you throw it out, and if it gets it one turn, it wins. So, it looks kind of sacky, but if, to me, that's like if Spectre wins from that position, if Moon wins from that position, that's what they do. So, and then week two against Don fans was just, just pretty much just dominant. This team is really hard to beat because it has so many win cons, which almost is more important than typing in 2024. Like to have to deal with Moon and Ape in the same game, it's just extremely annoying. Belly Bolt is really good, even if you don't tear it, but it's, it's shooting up in my mind being to something that's not just like a good tear captain or a good like, oh, this is here. Like this is something you bring every week and like always does something. Especially if you take it out of, you make Belly Bolt water, like it's really good. Um, we still, unfortunately, haven't really seen where Uniclus do anything, but someday it might. Who knows? Um, but yeah, B Babets has played really well. And this is a really structurally sound team. Fesendipity is really good. People are starting to realize it's a, it can do a lot of things. It's really good. Um, there's so many things to worry about about this team that if you if you don't account for something random, like say set up Jirachi happens to come uh magic guard reuniclus like shell smash blastoise just so many random things it can do that you didn't plan for and then it just sweeps you and it's got the hazards it can protect it with ape like this is a complete team and this is a definite championship contender i do think after like obviously we're ignoring the fact that it's plus 12 differential after three weeks now so this would probably this could very well be one the next time we talk about these teams but um Right now, we got it here because of where it was originally, and the first week was a little bit sacky. But now we're getting into real title contenders with Boston Babettes. All right, Don, anything else? Uh, yeah, I mean, we, we covered most of it. I think in terms of some weaknesses that this team has, um, I'm personally, I'm a bit of a Glyscor hater. Um, I think it's kind of, it feels really passive in a lot of matchups because you have to run a lot of bulk on a lot of the time. And 95 base attack, uninvested earthquakes are just not doing the job as a ground type a lot of the time. Like you want your, you want your ground type to be able to spam earthquake and be stinging things with it every time. 
But Glyscore, in my opinion, just feels a little bit too weak nowadays for, for that to be like the offensive ground type. And not that it's meant to be offensive ground, but you want an offensive ground, you know. Mm -hmm. um, I think non-Terra Electrode is probably never coming to a game, uh, especially when Belly Bolt exists as your electric type pivot already. Um, Cryagonal is good. But it doesn't really need to come as the spinner a lot of the time, especially when Blastoise already exists as a spinner. Uh, same with Karkul. Like basically, I feel like a lot of these guys just shouldn't be coming most games, which means it's basically just uh, another another team that's effectively playing 8-mon, which is like fine. Like Top-heavy is how you play Palpex. Um, I just I wonder if some of these points could have gone to something a bit more uh, potentially worthwhile to bring to a game. Um, Annihilate, I think, is very slept on a lot of the time. Like, people think of it like, oh, it, it needs Terra to be crazy good, but that's just not true at all. It's crazy good. And Moon is great. Yeah, that's pretty much all I got. I mean, yeah, I think all the points have been covered with this team. It's a good team, very structurally sound. The play has been good. Um, they face some some decent quality opponents. They they face the, the bulk of their stronger opponents here. Um towards the end of their schedule facing uh myself uh sydney and bc um so those those are kind of their tougher matchups uh coming up those that'll be the really the real test of their metal uh here in this division but i i do think this team is definitely one that we could see competing for the championship and being up in uh up in sunset next season and with that we move into the top three territory we move on to me the st louis Galios. um I'll let uh, Don. I'll let you take it away with uh, with this. All one. right. So first off, this team is shit. You go all the way to the bottom. <laughs> oh, um, yeah. All right. All right. Okay. <laughs> anyway. Anyway. Anyways. anyways. Three um, NFEs immediately disqualified. Shit. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I mean, that's. I, I feel like Crocolore without Terra is probably not coming to a game realistically. Uh, Trap Inch without Terra also probably shouldn't come to like it might come to a game to catch one threat. Uh, Draclock or Draclock, however you want to pronounce it uh also mostly not coming to games but like outside of that the, the top eight are really good it's, it's another eight man team um the terra captains i think are probably the strongest we've seen so far uh if not the strongest in the whole division um blood moon is really good zapdos is really good i feel like blaze is a really good partner with blood moon uh just because like blood moon like it stabs it, it can kind of struggle to hit um like some things like it struggles Actually, I guess not. Grand Normal is like really good on its own already. Uh, but Blaziken can hit like some of the steel types that could switch in on, on Blood Moon. So like uh, Blood Moon the move, not the poke. Um and so like if, if you can get Blaziken in early to like snipe one of those steel types or like force them force them out, uh it can be really, really helpful Blood Moon in a, in a late game. Uh, I really like Empoleon as a pivot support guy. Uh, I've been using it lately, and I've loved every second of it. Zapdos, I feel like, pairs really well with it. I, I like Empoleon paired with a good flying type. Uh, it helps resist the ground and fighting moves that uh, Empoleon is afraid of. Zarude is, like, probably the best Terra Captain in the format, either or Sarah Lynch. Um Honestly, I'm not a huge fan of the Terra typings. I feel like, I feel like if you want to do setup, a lot of teams... I don't know. On paper, they seem fine. I just feel like in practice for the pro matchups he's had so far, they haven't been very helpful. Uh, Cyclozar is cool. Always has been, always will be. Gengar is like the premier choice scarf Pokemon ever. Alchemy is good. Uh, it recently, as you can see there, week two, it was a 5-0 against Detroit. Uh, Alchemy got all six kills. Uh, I think. Or did Zarud get one? I don't remember. Zarud got one. But yeah, Alchemy got five kills. It was... A massacre um so yeah this team is really really solid it's definitely definitely a championship contender uh but yeah all right uh Zaw? uh yeah so this is a this is another one that i kind of helped make um we're about eight guys we believe in the eight guy theorem um, Terror Captains are strong. Week 1, good win against Keldeos was a tight game. Could have gone either way. Destroyed Zoroarks. Just like, even if Alchemy hadn't won, there's three other things that would have just swept the game, regardless. Um, Sogaleos, at worst, is probably going to go 6-2, and two, if not 7-1. and one. Like, 
probably they go one and one between the Babets and Shimchars. Like they'll win one and lose one of those, but they should win every other game for the season. So this is possibly going to be the number one seed just based on they have probably the easiest schedule commensatory to how good the team is. Um, I will say, just to be objective, that this team now has Baxcalibur instead of Blaziken, which I, I think is a mistake. I think that it's better with Blaziken. But it doesn't really change where it's going to be. I don't think it changes it that much. Um, this is one where, like, this the, all four of these top four teams, if they don't win the championship, I think the coach should be disappointed. I think these are all four championship caliber squads. But what separates this team from the two teams that we're about to see is, first of all, the top two teams have kept their spots. They have not moved. They were the top two to begin the season, and they've done nothing to lose those roles. They still have the best teams on paper, and they played well enough to keep their top two spots. All right, Syracuse, anything else to add? Um, I mean, my initial reaction... Uh besides everything we've already talked about, was I was going to say it's lacking an offensive dragon type. You know, Cyclozar, you can run specs, but hearing that it swapped over to Baxcalibur, I guess that covers uh, the one point I might have brought up. Um, like I said, it's an eight-mon it's an eight -mon team, um, but it's it's a damn good eight-mon team. It's, it's you know, no weaknesses all, all around. Um, we've hit most of the points, so I got not much to add, to add besides that. Um, I do would like to see. I did like Blaziken over Bax, but I understand the reasoning for Bax. But overall, like he said, top four team. Um, all these teams uh, should make semis at minimum, and uh, you know I I'm gonna enjoy watching it going forward. One thing I will say: Trap Pinch has already claimed one victim. As that you is can true. see, one victim on the roster. We we shall see what the what the little guy does the rest of the season. Who knows? Trap pitch for kill leader. Absolutely, it'll get a hey, it'll get six kills one week. I promise. Hey, I don't know what week that'll be, but we'll see. <laughs> not hey. not a week in our lifetime. Not a week in our <laughs> lifetime. I was hey. say, if you get if you get six kills against the rain team, I'll shave my head. Listen, if <laughs> if they pitch. if they just bring all dark types or all psychic types, I'll just. Banded first impression, all of them, and then switch out, and it'll be fine. Anyway, um, <laughs> number two, we have the Chicago Chimchars. Um, and uh, Donald, let you start this one again. All right, you guys see a Valiant and a Darkrai. I don't give a shit. I see a Terra Iron Leaves there. That's my guy. This team deserves number two right there. All right, and if you look at if you look at those victories. It's a 5-0 win against Richmond Raging Bolts, and it's got four. It's a 4-0 win against Kaborka Gengars. Iron Leaps, eight kills in two games. I believe it got like three against Kaborka in that game. It might have been a little bit more, uh, which means it either got like four or five against Richmond. Uh, if you guys didn't believe in Terra Iron Leaves, you should now. And this is with, in my opinion, less than ideal Terra types. I think Electric is cool. Electric is fine. I think uh, fighting is better than fairy on this thing, uh, especially on this team. Actually, maybe not because there's Valiant. Um, but you, are, you also already have a fairy and Valiant anyway, so if you're doubling up, may as well do it with the better type on leaves. Uh, I think Valiant is probably as good of a partner for Darkrai as you can ask for. They both kind of like spamming Hypnosis for each other, especially because Darkrai actually will get to use its ability that way. Uh, Glamora is a great partner for this team because you have a Valiant Darkrai in the leaves. That's that's some prime HO right there. Uh, you you drafted Moltres and Sloking, both of which are some of like the more flexible Valiant answers in the format. Like Valiant can muscle its way through them if it really, really wants to. But like the fact that you have them on your team means now you don't really have to. So all of a sudden your Valiant is just like way more flexible in more matchups. I think the backup Terra Captains are pretty good. Uh, Vikavolt is deceptively strong. That that thing has Chandelure special attack, and now it can it's stab Terra Electric. Uh, it's going to be nuking things. Uh, like Teams that don't have a good ground type, uh, like Dallas Dynamax, we, that Week 7 game, if Terra Electric Vikavolt doesn't come, I'm not going to lie, I'm going to be a little disappointed. But 
At the same time, there's a Terra Electric Iron Leaf there, so it very well doesn't have to come. But anyways, I think this team is just really, really strong. Um, and the play and the prep has been smart with it too. Against Kaborka, uh, Kaborka has a Corviknight, right? And so Mamoswine just brought Smackdown. And now the Corviknight's not an issue anymore. And it did like 80% to it in two turns. And so now all of a sudden, like uh, everything opens up way more with that Corviknight shift. And so basically, the team's good, the prep has been good, and the play has been good. And the results show it. And so I think this is absolutely a championship contender team, right? All right, Syracuse, how about you? So the Chicago Chimchars, one of the uh, other teams to get uh, rele derelegated down from uh, Sunset to Neon. And clearly it uh, put a chip on his shoulder because he has been tearing it up. Um, maybe just that wake-up call or just whatever it was. It was it, it shows, shows immensely. Um, Iron Leaves, we can't say enough about it. I feel like Iron Leaves, especially in Paldea decks, um, National decks, it's still good, but Paldea decks, there's a lot less um, things for it when it is Terra to counter it. So this thing goes on a tear. Um, I think it's just... I, I mean, when when you have eight kills on it in two weeks, it's 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 gotten eight of your... what or, uh, Eight of your, what, 12 kills? It's, it's nasty. It's so... Um, but having that plus the Valiant and the Darkrai, it, it, with the defensive core of Moltres, Slowking, and Tinkaton, Glamora being for hazards, you know, you got the, the sticky webs from Vicavolt, Mamoswine is always, you know, always a great mon. This, this is a scary team. And, uh, I, he will be staying up in these, uh, these top rankings all season. Um, maybe seven and one is my prediction if if not then goes strictly undefeated he doesn't have to play sylveons but overall i this this will be a finalist team mark my words zoth last bit of input uh yeah you know the, you could definitely put this one uh we're not yet changed switching it without uh sylveons losing but this team has been dominant just like dominating. I'm going to say, I said in the previews, I think they could have gotten something better than Iron Leaves. I'm still Neon. Will you all stop getting swept by Iron Leaves? Like, <laughs> look up what this does. It's not good. Look up what it does. Come it is on. good, but it's not this good. It's not this good. <laughs> Don, it's it shouldn't have eight kills class. in two weeks. It shouldn't have eight kills in two weeks. <laughs> I demand Neon. Who's the next? BC Lit Leos. Look up what Iron Leaves does. Don't let it sweep you and keep making me look like an idiot. Um, yeah, but past that, like, the only thing we can really talk about this is, is this, should this be one? Because it was kind of a coin flip between this and Sylveon's before the season. I think Sylveon's team is a little bit better, although this might be more explosive in terms of it's going to get, like, big, impressive wins. Uh, Sylveon's probably played slightly better opponents, which is why their differential isn't quite this high. Um, but if it keeps going this way, like, if they dominate Litleos, um... This week, this team might go to one regardless of anything, just because its its differential is going to end up being so high. It's on pace for like what a forty differential, and the only they really this is this team could easily not easily, but it should probably flirt with going undefeated, right? Like there's only two games they shouldn't really win on paper: Sogaleos and Litleos. Uh, so we'll, we'll see what happens. Yeah, and then I, yeah, this team has shown no reason to be any lower than what they are now. If anything, they've made a case to be number one. But I think the quality of opponents that the next team has faced is probably a little better, which boosts them up to that number one spot. And that number one spot, yet again, is the Sydney Sylveons. This team was number one pre you know draft it'll be number one this week and who knows it might even be number three for or not, no, number three number one for the next however many of these we do they might end up undefeated who who knows but so far their quality opponents has been a little bit better they haven't had the quite as like flashy wins they've all just been solid stick to the game plan get the kills where you need them and then pull out the win at the end um you know, just submitting themselves as one of the best teams on paper and, um, like, in, you know, in record. Um, 
like Dragapult, Terrapagos, Insane Core, uh, Landorus, and you know, Tentacruel, Galarian Zapdos, all just super good pieces, bunch of superstars all over the board. Um, I don't really have anything bad to say about this team. Um, Za, how about you? No, I mean, they played better people. Uh, I think they should probably be better than 2-0 over unknowns. But this team should be undefeated. Like, they, they only have, on paper, from what we've discussed so far with everything seen, they have uh, one real game to play the whole season against Boston Bay Bets. Um, they should be 6-0 and going into that game. If they're not, it's going to be a huge up. Kaborka looks like a trap game to me. Like any sports fans, you know, sometimes you can just pick out like a game the Cowboys will lose. You're like, this just looks like a game the Cowboys will lose. I'm going to say they're going to have a scare against Kaborka week five. But other than that, this team is like one of the better draft teams I recall seeing off the top of my head. Just because it has those top th four plus the terror captains of Delphox and Diancy. Um, I'm glad they made the change to fire for Delphox. I, I think just fire offense is really good. You just bring specs fire blast on this every week. It'll just devastate things. And then it has a bunch of win cons, which I think, uh, especially in a, with a newer player division, like Sylvian will win two weeks by itself, just being defensive setup. Like it's, it's really easy to set up this on people. They have so many setup threats. I think it's just going to be tough to ever crack this. And then we've seen... Terrapagos, I have a feeling uh, over the course of like 2025 is going to move up to being like a top tier draft pick in draft. Like it's going to move up into the Dragapult tier very, very soon. So they're really running what could be two of like the top four or five mons in the whole format on the same team. Plus Landorus Therian, which is like one of the better draft Pokemon ever. So yeah, they, sh they this team should be undefeated and win the championship. Like, if we're being dry with it. All right. Um, Syracuse, anything else to say? Um, I mean, initially looking at this team, my immediate thought is, dang, that's a lot of ground immunities. <laughs> just just dang, that's a lot lot of ground immunities. I mean, it makes up, you know, let, let's Tentacruel, Diancy, and Delphox all come in. Um, you know, it's got a lot of setup. Like you said, you can do a lot of different things with the Diancy. Bronzong, you could do... You know, obviously, body press or stored power, calm mind, calm mind on Sylveon, Terrapagos can do many things. Dragapult, Lando T. This is a team that is the Swiss Army knife that will stab you with every single knife. And uh, like I said, I feel like this is an easy, clear-cut finals between Sydney and Sylveons. I'm kind of disappointed we don't get to see them play in the regular season. So here's hoping we get to see them and play in playoffs. But like you said, this this unless this team drops a surprising loss to like Kaborko or maybe even like Zorox, maybe um, it should go undefeated otherwise. But it's going to be a clear cut finals between Sydney and Chimchars if everything goes how it should be. All right, and then um, Don, why don't you go ahead end it off, hype up uh, hype up your boy. Like I know this is my boy. Okay. It makes me so happy every week to see him in number And he, he he drafted a great team. All right. Um, top two, we already talked about a little bit. We know we know they're good. We know why they're good. Uh Landorus is like a classic glue piece, like for a decade now. Um, but one of the pieces I like talking about when I see it on a team is Gapdos. Uh, I'm of the opinion that this thing is basically like a well played Gapdos is almost impossible to prep against. Uh the other relevant fighting flying type that you see sometimes in draft is Halucha. And the reason that thing is so hard to prep for is because it gets fast. And once it gets set up, it's impossible to wall. The thing about Gapdos is it doesn't need to get set up to be impossible to wall. It just, it just, you slap a choice item on it and you click moves. You can click U-turn, knockoff, or your stabs and you're in a phenomenal position automatically. It's just it, it takes a little bit of smart play, which is uh, which is honestly it's not hard for this team to come across because like when your team support is so good, it, it kind of lessens the amount of smart play that you need for a mon like Gapdos, and that's really powerful here. I think Diancy and Sylveon, in my opinion, feel a little bit redundant. Uh, it's not impossible, and like double fairy is like always a good thing, especially when one of them's your Terra Captain. I just feel like uh. 
Whatever Sylveon wants to do in a matchup outside of Wish Passing, Deancey's probably going to do it better just by virtue of having access to Terra. Um, and so because of that, I feel like if there were to be a change to this team, I would probably swap Sylveon for something else. Outside of that, though, this team really is... It's very good. I'm, I'm a massive Bronzong supporter. It's, in my opinion, probably the only... Uh, low tier steel type that is like bringable every week it's so reliable it can do so many different things <clears throat> it's just i don't know I, I i like this team a lot it's a really good team i think the last two were kind of throwaways but like it's whatever who cares the, the other nine are so good who cares and with that we've recognized the creme de la creme of the neon division and uh we'll see you back with prs in about another two weeks with all that being said, have a good one, everybody.